Hello and welcome to a video tutorial from matthawkins.co.uk. In this tutorial I'll show you how to convert DVD files to MP4 using Handbrake version 0.9.5 and this is a quicker version of a tutorial I've already uploaded. So first of all you need to go over to handbrake.fr and on the download page you'll be able to download an installer for Handbrake for your system of choice and it's also worth noting that the user manual is one click away from their home page as well and this will actually explain all the settings that I'm not going to have time to actually go over. Um, the most important thing to note at the moment is that Handbrake cannot read encrypted DVDs. That means you are most likely going to need um, to rip your DVD files to your hard drive before you attempt to encode them using Handbrake. I can recommend using DVD Fab. HD decryptor which is free and does a pretty good job of ripping uh, DVD files to your hard drive. So here's Handbrake. The first thing you need to do is select your source. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to select folder and then going to browse to a ripped DVD folder and I'm going to select the video TS folder and this is a DVD that I've ripped to my hard drive using DVD Fab HD Decryptor. Now it will list the titles on the DVD. There's only one title in my case. It's two hours, two minutes long. And what you can do is you can select what chapters you want to encode. Now normally it would default to um, selecting chapters 1 to the last chapter, in this case 12. Now for the case of this tutorial what I'm actually going to do is select seconds and I'm going to select 10 minutes into the film and an extra 60 seconds. So basically I'm just going to be encoding 60 seconds. In most cases you're going to simply leave that on chapters 1 through whatever the end chapter is. You then select your destination using the browse button here. I'm going to leave that directory as it is. There's the file name that it's going to create. I've selected MP4 container. You can choose MKV container, but for this tutorial I'm choosing MP4. It's using the M4V extension, which is favoured by um, QuickTime. You can change that after it's encoded to MP4. They're exactly the same, um, however some players will prefer one extension some prefer M4V, some prefer MP4, so simply change it to whichever one you prefer. Um, you'll see a number of presets down here. Obviously if you want to encode to any of these Apple devices, simply choose that preset. However, because I'm going to encode mine for use on a media player, I'm just simply going to choose high profile. I'm going to ignore these settings. If you want to know what these settings are for, then uh, read up about it in the user manual. On picture, I'm going to set this to loose. I'm going to let it choose the settings. And I'm going to leave cropping automatic. I'm going to leave the video filters on the default. I'm going to set the H264 video codec, which is the codec that's actually going to encode the video. You can choose MPEG-4 there, which is MPEG part 2. H264 is actually also MPEG-4, but it's um, part 10 of the specification. Um, I'm going to leave the frame rate the same. I'm going to select constant quality and I'm going to leave it on the default 20, which for a DVD source is usually fine. If you want to increase the quality you want the number to um, be lower. However for DVD there isn't much point going beyond 19. Um, so in most cases you can leave it at 20. Audio, um, what it's going to do is it's going to take the source audio and there's a 2 channel track and a 5.1 channel track. The high profile setting will create two audio tracks for you. Both the same but just in different formats. The first one is AAC and the second one is a straight copy 
of track one. Now this DVD's got surround sound, so that um, straight copy I'm going to actually adjust and set to 5.1 there. So basically what I'm going to end up with is a straight copy of the 5.1 um, audio, which is what it means by pass through, and they're set to auto. But it's also going to create a um, a two-channel AAC compressed audio track as well with a bit rate of 160. If you want to change that, you can change that there. If you want to change the audio codec, you can change it there. Exactly why you might change this is going to simply depend on where you're planning on actually playing this video and what hardware you're going to be using. Subtitles I'm going to ignore because there aren't any subtitles. Um, chapter names I'm going to leave at the default. The advanced I'm going to leave because they've already been set by this preset here. I don't understand what most of these are for, so in general I would say leave these alone unless you've got a specific reason for changing them. Usually the presets do a pretty good job of setting these, so I always leave them on the default. Once you've set up all your parameters here, and you've made sure you've set a destination, you can click preview. And what the preview would do is encode a short amount of video. I'm going to go for five seconds and I'm going to click play with QuickTime. And what it'll do is it have you select here using these settings, and you'll then be able to play back that preview in QuickTime. And this will enable you just to check that you know you've done um, done the correct job with the settings. So so that's just done a quick check there. Obviously, if you've got a bit more time, you can do a slightly longer preview. Now, what I'm going to do then is click Start. And this will actually use the encoding. And you'll see the progress down here. And it will calculate a remaining time. And in this case, it's going to take about a minute. So the encoding is finished. And if I drop into the destination folder, it's created the file here. So I can double click that and get that to play. And that's playing back just fine, so that looks good. So that should be about a minute of video. Because remember, that's what I selected up here. And if I right click on here and select a program I use called Media Info, it will show me the information um, in that video so you can see here the resolution it's encoded at and the fact it's created two audio streams and that's just the log file and there's the preview file and as I said before if you need to you can simply change that to mp4 um, it's exactly the same file and that is how you convert DVD files to MP4 using Handbrake. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please remember to click the like button and to share it with your friends on your favourite social networking sites. Thank you.